All right there, everyone. Why the Serena Williams U.S. Open meltdown matters. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. I don't know how many of you got to see the women's finals at the U.S. Open over at Flushing Meadows and uh, New York City. I've actually had the joint privilege of taking my oldest daughter to the main stadium there, the Arthur Ashe uh, Stadium, uh, a couple of times. It's really an exciting experience, but... Um, Many of you, I'm sure, know of what happened on Saturday at the women's final. Uh, Serena Williams was clearly being outplayed by the young, up-and-coming Japanese tennis player Naomi Osaka. Serena Williams was clearly agitated. She was frustrated. And then on top of that, she was given a violation from the chair umpire Carlos Ramos for illegal coaching from her player box. Her coach did admit later on that he was, in fact, uh, coaching her and that Ramos was simply enforcing the rules of tennis, which he doesn't like. Ramos did nothing wrong, and he simply gave Williams a formal penalty, which amounts to a formal warning. Well, Williams just freaks out. I mean, she utterly and completely freaked out. She accused Ramos of, well, accusing her. <laughs> Remember that. She she accused Ramos of accusing her of cheating, and she called his character into question for calling her character into question. She seemed incapable of brushing off the penalty, and so when she lost the next game, she smashed her racket on the court, which again, according to the rules of tennis, is a court violation and her opponent, Naomi Osaka, received a free point as a result. And so during the changeover, as Williams was sitting in her chair, she had what was basically an adult temper tantrum. She kept badgering Ramos, saying that he'll never, ever, ever be on the court, uh, another court of hers as long as he lives. He's a liar. She, uh, he owes her an apology, a public apology in front of everyone. He's a thief. He stole a point from her. And Ramos had had enough, and so he slapped her with what's called a game penalty, where she actually lost a game, and she eventually would go on, of course, to lose the match and the uh, championship. Now, you would think that Serena would come to her senses and say, you know what, I really blew up, I got caught up in the heat of the moment, lost my cool, I'm sorry for that. But alas, no, 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 my friend. Serena didn't lose her cool. She wasn't engaged in a temperamental breakdown. She was not guilty of inappropriate and disgustingly infantile behavior. No, 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 no. No, according to Serena, she was valiantly fighting for women's equality. This is Serena over at her uh, press conference. Quote, I'm here fighting for women's rights and for women's equality, and for all kinds of stuff. And for me to say thief, and for him to take a game, it made me feel like it was a sexist remark. He's never took a game from a man because they said thief. For me, it blows my mind. But I'm going to continue to fight for women and to fight for us to have equal rights. Maybe it didn't work for me, but it's going to work out for the next person. And the room broke out into applause when she finished her uh, response and it seems that Serena has a a, a number of uh, supporters. People Magazine claimed that Serena Williams delivered an empowering message about her fight, her fight, her struggle for women's equality at the post championship press conference. Former tennis great Billie Jean King immediately rushed to her defense, tweeting out that it was blatantly obvious that men are treated differently than women in professional uh, tennis. Women get hysterical while men are merely outspoken and, and there were no repercussions for them. And then she says, thank you, Serena Williams, for calling out this double standard. Ellen DeGeneres came out and proclaimed that Serena Williams changed the world for the better. And Jonathan Van Ness demanded that the umpire should be fired. Serena is queen forever. The Women's Tennis Association is backing her. And the Washington Post even said, yeah, a Williams abused her racket, but Ramos did something far uglier. He abused his authority. We could go on and on and on. Now, what makes this whole incident a tragedy, in my opinion, and why I think it really does matter, is because of what sports are really supposed to 
be all about. Historically speaking, at least in terms of our Western civilization, philosophers envisioned the athlete as one who embodied what they called kalokagathia, which meant the beautiful and the good. A true sportsman exemplified a body and a mind united in harmony, which for philosophers was the human ideal. Even the early Christian church, by and large, picked up on the significance of sport as a characteristic of the Christian life, particularly as it related to the formation of the classical virtue known as enkratia, self-control, or self-mastery. Paul, St. Paul, uses this motif in 1 Corinthians 9. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control. Enkratevome is the uh, verb there. Galatians 5, 7. You were running well. Who cut in front of you? Uh, so as to, so as to prevent you to obey the truth. This whole no pain, no gain kind of concept of the Greeks was adopted by Christians as a motif for the self-control and bodily advancement uh, that was needed for the advancement of the Christian gospel. Now, dare I say it, but obviously somewhere along the way, all of this changed. In his influential study on modern sports, Alan Gutmann uh, sees this change coming at least in part through the process of modern secularization. While uh, Christians took an active role in the sports world in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in the United States and Europe, sports nevertheless took on what Gutmann calls a kind of secular faith. And this was due in no small part due to the modernization of sports, which involved the standardization of rules and the quantification of statistics and the professionalization of players. But what this modernization of sports did is it replaced the classical notion of virtue with the secular ethic of political correctness. Now sports teams, as I'm sure you all know, they now use their fame and fortune to promote feminism and multiculturalism. They use it to promote various ethno-nationalisms, such as the iconic Black Power Salute by Tommy Smith and John Carlos during the uh, national anthem at the 1968 Olympic Games, and of course Colin Kaepernick's protesting the national anthem in the National Football League. And so sports in our modern contemporary era have become an occasion to promote all kinds of politically correct activist causes. However, Serena Williams' meltdown, I think, reveals something very, very telling about this new virtue of political correctness dominating our professional sports. And this is why I believe her meltdown really matters for us. Serena's meltdown at the U.S. Open matters because it was an explicit example of the various ways in which the kinds of virtues that are supposed to be the hallmarks of our sports competition have been replaced by a pseudo-virtue of victimization and political correctness here in the United States. Her demonstrably inappropriate and pathetically childish behavior was for many people effectively overturned and transformed into a bizarre kind of valor, almost a martyrdom, simply by invoking the notion that she was fighting for women's rights. It's as if standing up for politically correct values is itself all the justification needed to vindicate and excuse what is otherwise nothing more than an extended and frankly embarrassing adult temper tantrum, which in turn, I would argue, which in turn reveals just how vapid and devoid of virtue political correctness really is. If the so-called virtue of feminist-inspired equal rights entails the justification to act out in the most absurdly temperamental of manners, like Serena Williams did, if political correctness justifies that kind of absurdly temperamental behavior, then it is ironically an ideology that is completely devoid of any virtue worth emulating whatsoever. Ultimately, Serena Williams' meltdown matters because it is a public demonstration of just how morally vapid political correctness really is. And that is the real double standard here. By the way, bravo to the new U.S. Open tennis champion, Naomi Osaka, who conducted herself with poise and grace and humility throughout the whole ugly ordeal. She is a model champion in the classical sense of one who competes with honor and respect for her opponent, all the while her opponent was concerned only with herself. Naomi 
is the true champion. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon or PayPal link below and become a monthly or a one-time supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.